Hello, and welcome to our show. We're so glad you joined us today. Uh, I'm Darlene Pigford with Angie. And I'm Greg Bauer, and our little friend Wicket <laughs> is with us again today. And, and uh, we've got a, a couple of upcoming shows we want to tell our viewers okay. about, Darlene. First of all, uh, we're going to go back and revisit the Quilt Museum. This will be oh, our fifth show that we've done. Fifth that. show. Quilts for animal lovers. And, and then each one gets better. No, oh, it sure <laughs> does. And they always have a new collection. And also uh, one on training your dog. Oh, you hear that, Wicket? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there is some hope for there some There is animals. some hope, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but what do we have on tap for today, Darlene? Well, we have a show, Greg, that you and I have wanted to do for a long time. And that's about caring for a horse. Mm -hmm. If you were considering getting a horse for a as a pet or for some other reason, we're going to try to give you information that you should know about caring for a horse. Okay. Introduce our guest, I'll Greg. I'll be happy to. Um, next to Darlene, to her, Darlene's first right there, I guess, is Joy Weinbarger, who was with us earlier for a show um, dealing with an organization that we'll talk about a little bit. And next to her is one of the people who helps uh, Joy, Dara Triplett. And uh, or uh, Dara Triplett, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, we're so glad that the two of you have yes. come today to share some expertise on caring for a horse and also to hear a little bit more about your organization. So, well, Thank understand you. your non not for profit organization right. is H O R S E, right? H O R S E S. S E S, horses. <laughs> All right. Briefly, what is this organization? Horses stands for Helping Others Reach Success Using Equine Services. And we are a nonprofit 501c3 organization, and we offer therapeutic horseback riding to children and adults with special needs. Fantastic. Okay. And you are an instructor with yes. What what instructor with the students? Or uh -huh. I work with the special needs riders, and uh, we give them a, a lesson, an hour lesson, and they get therapy from it. Mm -hmm. Wow. When do we sign up, Greg? <laughs> 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 you hear that, Angie? Special uh, needs. <laughs> well, I think that's a, a marvelous uh, opportunity for, uh, for, for young people and even adults because we need all the therapy these days and uplifting experiences that we can get. <laughs> well, um, Joy, tell us a little bit more about the rest of your fur family then. Uh, we have quite a few. We've got... Um, Cats, dogs, chickens, and of course the horses. So yeah. we're we're an extended family. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dara, how about you? Well, I have um, two horses of my own, and mm -hmm. I have one of the horses and courses at my house that I keep and take care of. And I have two roosters, which I really don't want, but they're there. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> and then I have um, three. Um, dogs and two cats. Oh my goodness. Greg, their, their numbers almost match ours, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> a different mixture. No, they exceed us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I think they do. Okay, well, let's get started. I am ignorant about grooming, what you feed a horse, like anything like that. First, tell me, what do you feed a horse? Hay is the most important thing. That They have to have hay every day. That uh, provides them with fiber and forage, and it's what keeps their their gut moving. Okay. Uh, you can you can supplement with grain. Some people do. Uh, I personally do because I think that they get uh, nutrients and vitamins from the grain that they don't normally get from from the hay. Uh, okay. Okay. So they're not going to take your cat food, Angie. No. no okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I well, have a couple that might eat it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Probably. But, but uh, l let's point out though that too, it is important to. If you get a horse from someone, which is the case for many people, uh, very few people get a horse as a, as a foal or as right. a colt. Um, what kind of information would people need to have from the previous owner as to um, uh, what should be fed to them and that sort of thing? I think the f most important thing is to find out first what they're feeding them currently mm -hmm. because you don't want to just switch their feed suddenly because horses can get colic from that. And when they get colic, that, that's a very dangerous situation for a horse. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can be fatal. Uh, so what you want to do is wean them off what they're eating. So you would mix it. Uh, you would start with half and half and wait several days and then slowly decrease the old feed and, 
and increase the, the new addition mm -hmm. until you're just straight the new feed. Is, yep. is there any particular reason why you would want to change the food? Uh, cost would be the one thing. There's lots mm -hmm. of different types of feed and, mm -hmm. and um, okay. uh, the quality is different and the cost is different. Uh, some people just like some of the name brands and uh, some people really feel like it's a whole lot better quality of food. Mm -hmm. So cost and then uh, where you get it I think is a big key too okay. because what's available in one area might not be available around, oh, around you. Okay, all right. Okay, I understand you brought us a, a, a diagram or line drawing of a horse and you're going to tell us about its parts leading up eventually to grooming. So, right. All right, so tell us about the parts of a horse. Well, the diagram uh, was made for us by one of our volunteers and it's, uh, she made it for us to demonstrate the parts of a horse for our rider. Okay. So, um, the, we use it in class as a teaching tool in several different ways. The, uh, the words are removable, it has Velcro on the back of them, so that that allows oh. us to place the words in, in a container for the rider, and they can draw one out, and then um, we give them the opportunity to place it in the correct position on the board. So oh. they may be right, they may be wrong, but it's a teaching tool. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Um, another way that we use it, the diagram, is to place the uh, words on a Vel we have little Velcro sticky pads uh -huh. all around the arena and they can place the words on that and then we play a game with them uh, similar to the child's game red light. Okay. So, w so we'll, the instructor will be in the arena and the rider will be steering their horse around the arena and it'll be uh, two, three, four different riders together in the class and we'll just say one, two, three, red light, stop and the word that's nearest them they'll have to, to get it off the wall and then have the opportunity to try to place it in the correct position on the diagram. Oh, how so it's it's very useful tool in teaching what the correct parts of the horse are, where they're located. Uh-huh. What go ahead, Greg. No, I was gonna ask Dara, as you worked with it with this diagram, what um uh, what parts of the horse seem to be the most difficult or the easiest for the for the students, the riders? Oh, I would say probably the ears and the tail. <laughs> <laughs> And the nose and the butt. <laughs> but um, there's lots of different uh, parts of the body that the kids actually like. Um, one of those uh, parts on the horse, like the back feet, <laughs> you know, that's a really good mm -hmm. tool to use so that the kids will know that's a danger area. You know, don't mm -hmm. go to the back of the horse or the feet. Be careful in that little area. So that's a really good tool. And, and, and growing up, uh, I've been kicked by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I have too. Because I didn't approach it correctly. We probably all have. And yes. It's not a fun experience. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, that, that gives us a, a good place to start. And we're going to move into uh, some things dealing with grooming in a few minutes now. But we want to take a uh, break now and look at a, uh, a happy tale. And this is about one of the horses that's in the program called Cappy. And I think that uh, our viewers will find this very interesting, so give a listen. Cappy is a 20-year-old gelding. His breed is Paso Fino, which is prized for a smooth, natural four-beat gait that is performed at varied levels of extension in stride. All four hooves travel close to the ground while in motion and are lifted equally in height. At whatever speed he travels, the smoothness of the gait ideally allows the rider to appear motionless with little up and down movement. Paso Fino means fine step. The breed originated in Spain, and it was used for plantation work because of its endurance and the comfortable ride it provided to the rider. The Paso Fino is a lively horse that has a natural drive and willingness and a generally nice disposition. Cappy can sometimes be rather spunky or appear high strung, but it's just a front. He is really pretty likable. He doesn't like to be alone, he likes to hang out with friends, and his favorite thing to do is go trail riding. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that the little tale about Cappy. And uh, he, I guess, uh, Joy, is one of the veterans of your program. He's a 20 year old gelding. And, right. And how Actually, did you come about, uh, Cappy? 
actually, he's been in our program for just one year. Okay. However, he was donated to us uh, by a program in Tennessee that dissolved. So he has oh. been in the therapeutic oh. uh, setting for, for quite quite a while, but he's only been with us for the past year. Oh, okay. And now, he, he's spunky? Yes, he is. <laughs> he's, he's built small, but he's, he's very, his movements are very, very quick. He's, he's, he's a very person, he's got a lot of personality. Oh. The kids absolutely love Cappy. <laughs> ah. He's okay. been a very good addition to Carson Park. Okay. Now, 20 years old, now is that considered young, old, middle age for a horse? It's beyond middle age. Horses can can live up to uh, 30, 35 years old. I've even Ooh. heard, I've not known any personally, but I have heard of, of a few horses that lived up to 40. So um, after about 20 years, they seems like they start slowing down a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but we've got um, some that are 24 that are still used in our program, so they still got a lot of. You want to decrease their workload somewhat by that by that time, uh -huh. but uh, Cappy being 20, he is still very spunky. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know that he was 20, right? No, you would not. Uh, I'll have to ask him sometime what his secret is. <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of the things about uh, uh, people our viewers need to remember about horses is uh, they have a quite a long lifespan compared, say, to a cat oh, yes. or a dog. Uh, they're very similar to birds. Uh, birds have usually have longer lifespans, right. too. Right. So, Well, we've gotten just uh, really a, an awfully good start. Let, let's take a look now at what some of the things are that go on in grooming a horse. And, and uh, you've got some tools with you there, Joy, and we have some picks for our uh, uh, viewers. So first thing we need to look at, I guess, is how do you approach a horse safely? You want to approach a horse with caution always, <laughs> <laughs> of course, and you always want to approach a horse from the front. You never want to approach the horse from the back because okay. they, you know, they have a vision that sometimes will block the back side of them and they can't always see you back there. Mm -hmm. So um, I usually tell all of my riders to approach the horse from the front so they can see you. Um, also keep your hands on the horse always especially when you're moving around the back of the horse. That way they can feel you and they know that you're there. They, they know your presence is always there. Oh, so you put your hands physically on the mm -hmm. horse? Mm -hmm. Oh, and yes. you, if the that's closer you are to a horse, believe it or not, the safer you are. Really? Especially when it comes to their backside, because their legs are long and it, they have to reach out in order to get you, so. Okay. Hmm. And it also helps to talk to the horse too, doesn't it, Dara? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Talking is a good thing. They like that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Cappy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, so the safe, the safe approach to the horse is obviously the first thing that you need to learn and, and work with. Uh, what are some of the, uh, the tools that we might use then in, in grooming? Uh, okay. Let's, yeah, you, let's move on to the second yeah. picture, which mm -hmm. is of the tail. Um, there's such things as... Well, we have a curry comb. So after you approach the horse towards the shoulder, you keep your one hand on him. Okay. When you use the curry comb, you're going to use it in a circular motion on his body. You do not want to use this on his face or any bony areas because it, it can hurt him. Okay. So you want to do a circular motion all over his body. And what this does is brings up the dirt in his coat, brings it up closer to the surface. It kind of releases it and gets it up to the surface. Okay, all righty. Now, as we're, if we're doing that, then, um, of course, with a tail, as, which is, I think, where we are, uh, you would use, what, a, a comb or a wood to brush or mm -hmm. what would be best for uh, working would, with a tail? A comb, a comb. We use a comb. Um, I usually start at the bottom of the, the um, tail and uh -huh. work our way up slowly. Mm -hmm. That way you're not... Pulling, pulling all of the tangles out at one time because that can be kind of painful, but um, we usually start at the bottom and work our way up. Okay. Well, much like a person would do with their own hair on their mm -hmm. head. Right, mm -hmm. but what, what you would want to do when you, when you get ready to comb the tail, you would be standing next to the horse's hip with your hand on their hip mm -hmm. and to let them know you're there, and you're going to face the opposite direction that the horse is facing. Okay. So you would grasp the tail and pull it over to you, so you're actually pulling the tail to the side, so oh. you're standing right next to the horse's hip. You're not standing directly behind him. Oh, okay. 
that for safety. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that for does safety. make sense. Okay. Right. Oh. All righty. Uh, let's move on. How, uh, what about the uh, uh, a brush, a hard brush? What would you use that for? A hard brush um, would actually be used to get the dirt off the top of the uh, coat. Like okay. if you know, after you use the curry comb, okay. you would want to go back over with the brush, and that kind of smooths the hair down and knocks the dust off after you've brought it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And usually, I tell is to go with the the hair in the way it lays on the horse. If it, you know, curls, you just kind of go with the, <laughs> I mean, so that's usually what. And you want to brush in the direction that the hair grows. Okay. Yeah. And that way, and the reason for that is probably it doesn't pull as much. Right. It right. Won't, it'll be more comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a soft brush, what, what do you use that for? The soft brush is mainly used for a lot around the face area because it's more tender spots. So you want to use that around the face area, especially around the eyes and the nose and, you know, the head mm -hmm. of the horse because it's a lot softer and won't be quite as harsh. Okay. It also puts a shine on the horse's coat. Oh, yes. Okay. All now, right. Now, as far as uh, their mane, do you treat the mane the same way that you do the tail? Yes. Yes. The mane is the same way as yes. the tail. And you would mm -hmm. use the, the, the comb or the, the brush. Mm -hmm. The comb. We do have a conditioner that sometimes we spray in if they have a lot of tangles, and we can spray it in there, and it'll help you to comb through the mane easier mm -hmm. to get some of the tangles out. Right. And, of course, there you don't have to, when you stand beside the horse, you don't have to worry about standing right. behind the horse. Right, <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> um. And how about their feet? For their feet, we use the hoof pick, and you want to hold it in the palm of your hand like this with the point away from your body. Okay. So when, when you use the hoof pick, uh, it removes dirt, rocks, and manure from the hooves. And when you get ready to pick the front feet, you want to put your hand on the horse's shoulder and let your hand trail down his leg when you get to his what would the, the hoof, you want to pick it up like this, and then you're going to scrape it away from your body. Okay. So you're okay. going to be picking the hoof like this away from you, but you're going to be standing with the horse's leg is, or shoulder is right here beside you, so you're really close to him. And this would be, um, you would do it the same way whether the horse was shooed or not, wouldn't it? Exactly. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. How about the back hooves? <laughs> the That's back the hooves. scary part. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to stand at the hip of the horse, and the the same the same scenario goes. Run your hand down the horse to make sure he's used to you picking up his foot. You know that he's used to you there, and that would go along the same way as the front hoof. You would pick it up, but always stay at the hip of the horse. Always in close. And the way I do it, when I'm holding the back hoof, I always slide, slide my knee in so that I, I'm bringing the hoof in to the inside of the leg closest to the horse. And it kind of, they prop their foot up, their, their hoof up on the inside of my knee. And that allows me to work. And I, I guess I've got, I keep a grasp on that ankle so it's not going <laughs> to come back and bite me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, biting can be a problem. Uh, it horse, can be. Uh, horses have pretty good sized teeth. They yes, sure do. They, do. <laughs> <laughs> they sure do. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I, and I've always wondered about something. We have a ma major problem with our cats get, getting their ears dirty. Mm -hmm. Do horses have the same problem uh, with collecting dirt and things like that or in their ears? Or something in the um, parasites in their ears or don't really have that much trouble. They have a lot of hair in their ears and, you know. That probably keeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. things and out. in the summertime, you know, we have groomed them where the hair is not as thick in thick. the, so it won't collect a lot of stuff in the summertime. Of course, they need that hair in the wintertime to protect mm -hmm. their ears, but in the summertime, we kind of groom it out somewhat so that they're not so thick and it doesn't grab a lot of bacteria and stuff. And but now the real question, how, how long does this process take and how often do you have to do this grooming? Well, it depends <laughs> on the horse. <laughs> okay. It does, it depends on the horse. Um, some horses are just like people, they, they just like to get dirtier than others. <laughs> uh, the one horse's ink horse that I have at my house is 
I call him the little pig because he loves to be dirty and usually takes a good while to get him clean. And then I have one that likes to be clean so he doesn't take near as long. It just depends on the horse, you know, and how much they tolerate from you and, you know, and what direction you're doing it with. Okay, so. would you, in, normally would it be once a week, every day? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, well, in the wintertime, I have to say probably not as much as in the summertime when you're right. riding them, but yes, I would say once or twice a week, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how long, uh, uh, when you do it, is this 15 minutes, is hour, two hours? I mean, horses can be a you know big animal to go with those mm -hmm. the circular motion. You can you can do a quick a quick grooming in about 15 20 minutes, uh, or you can get uh, really thorough and totally give them a bath and do the whole thing. <laughs> it would probably take about an hour or so. Yeah. To do a good, yeah. complete, thorough job, if you were going to have them in a horse show or something, I would say it would take at least an hour or more. Okay. Well, that is for the love of animals, isn't it, Greg? Well, and it's not that much different than what you would do for a dog or a cat yeah, if you're they putting were in them in a show. show. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. oh, they're, yes. they're just bigger. Yeah. yeah, they're just bigger, right. A lot more of them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, well, let's uh, take a quick break now and, and take a look at a second happy tale. This is about uh, a horse named Poco Valentino, oh. and he had a very special birthday, so give a listen. This is Poco Valentino. He was born on Valentine's Day and is a tri-colored paint horse. He's 10 years old and is a gelding. Paint horses in general are smart, willing, and love to work. They're intelligent, friendly, quick-footed, and easygoing. They are known to be athletic and muscular. Poco is very versatile because he can be really calm when he has a young, inexperienced rider on his back. But he will also perk up for an adult, experienced rider. That just means he's smart because he can tell the difference. Poco loves to get a bath and play in water. He's been known to grab the water hose and spray his buddies. He also loves horse treats, but he really doesn't care much for peppermint candy. Welcome back. <laughs> we, we hope you enjoyed that little tale about Poco oh, Valentino. And uh, he sounds like a horse that I'd love to have. Uh, Poco to Valentino, with a name like that, has to be special. Well, but he has that nice, easy gait, and so he's really easy to, to do with. Oh, um, yes. Let, let's uh, uh, take a, a, just a deviation a little bit uh, for now. Uh, how can our viewers contact Horses, Inc.? They can contact by phone at 270-437-3881, okay. or they could uh, look us up on the internet. We are on Facebook and we are on Twitter, uh, but they can go to our website at www.horsesinc.org. Okay. Um, they, they don't tweet, do they? Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. I think I think, I think uh, they probably would if they could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of them, anyway. But I bet they tweet in a different way. They do. I bet they're well, good communicators, aren't they? Yes, they are. Verbal. Now you have <laughs> you have a lot of uh, activities uh, related with the organization and so on. Uh, something about um, summer camps and things like that. What's what's the story with those? Right, we're going to be having a summer camp, and um, I'm not sure if the information is on our website yet. Uh, we're just ironing out some details on it, but. Uh, if it's not on there right now, just keep checking back. It will okay. definitely be on there. Any information on any events that we do, um, just keep checking back on that to find mm -hmm. out the details. So okay. you, you do maintain a calendar? Yes, we do. I, mm -hmm. I assume you're a little more active in the summer, <laughs> spring and fall than... W we are. We from about March to about November, it is nonstop. Nonstop. Right. Wow. You're you're busy, busy people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we talked a little bit earlier about some of the cost considerations, that, and we've talked about uh, what you feed the animals and and that and sort of grooming. thing. And grooming and uh, uh, that it's not just a simple process. So. Let's see, what other areas... Well, we were going to... Let, let's revisit the cost now. Oh, well, okay. that's what we're doing, is revisiting okay, the cost. Okay, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, I think one of the main costs is the food, the hay and the grain, uh, because they eat so much hay, um, and it has to be very good quality. That's, the, that's their main source 
of, of uh, nutrition is the hay, and that's what keeps their, their stomachs moving, their gut processing, because it, that's mm -hmm. continuous with a horse. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. And uh, what the, there are supplements that you can give a horse, and you just have to check with your vet about whether they really need those or not, because there's a lot of stuff on the market uh, that might not be necessary. Mm -hmm. It just may be an additional cost. Mm -hmm. So that's by choice. Okay, and what about shelter? Shelter, or, um, or every the, horse needs a shelter. <laughs> At <laughs> this time of year, um, oh, they yeah. need either a run edge shed or a stall. In the in, in a barn, mm -hmm. um, just anything from you know for protection of the elements like snow and right. all that bad stuff that comes along. And one of the considerations, while it may not be cost, but it's time, is you have to clean that stall. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. It's, very, it's it's a very it's costly in time also. Right. right. Yes. Uh, yes. Another cost is is horses have to have vaccinations and oh, things yeah. just and wormed just like dogs and cats do. So we suggest a, a two to three month uh, warming schedule, rotation schedule. Mm -hmm. But you can check with your, your vet for those things. Well, I'll tell you, we are fast running out I of time. Know. I know, Greg. So uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, what would each of you like to have the viewers remember most about the show today? Darren? I'd We'll start with you. <laughs> start well, with you on that. I would say that having a horse is is a costly thing. It's it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money to uh, take care of a horse and keep a horse in your own care. So I guess if there's one thing I would like to any everybody to remember is that it is something that's going to take a lot of your time and a lot of money to keep up. So. So there's no such thing as a free horse. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Buying the horse is the cheap part. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And Joy. Uh, that horses do live to be 30, 35 years old. So this is not just a little short time uh, commitment that, that mm -hmm. they do live to be that, that long. They l do live that long. So they're gonna be part of your family for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be a responsible owner. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, we have oh. just gotten a wonderful indoctrination yes. beginning on horses and I hope that our viewers have um, uh, found a lot of valuable information, and I'm sure they have from today. So, unfortunately, we're running out I of know. time, Darlene. Yes. So, I guess in closing, I'm Greg. I'm Darlene. And we want our viewers to remember what we tell you every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and, and every day. day. See you next time. See you next time. time. <laughs> Bye.